Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about installing Python and PyCharm onto our Kali Linux installation. PyCharm is the integrated development environment that we will be using for learning Python. So the first thing we're going to ensure is that we have network access, and that means access to the internet. So to do this, I'm going to go to Devices, I'm going to go to Network, and I'm going to check my network settings. And I'm going to ensure that my network adapter is set to NAT. Say OK to that. If you've been keeping up with your Kali updates and your distribution upgrades, then you should already have Python with the latest edition. Let's go ahead and check that. So to do this, I'm just going to bring up a terminal. And I'm going to type in Python 3 followed by a space dash dash version. And you'll notice that it comes back and tells me that I do have the latest version of Python, which is 3.8.5. If you would like to check the current version that you have for Python 2, you can just remove that 3 and type in Python space dash dash version. Hit enter. And it comes back and lets you know which version of Python 2 you currently have installed. So if you don't currently have the correct update for your Python, Go ahead and run the commands that are inside of the lab file. Begin with the app update, move on to the full upgrade, and finally to the distribution upgrade. And then you can move down and you can begin the installation for Python 3 if it did not update to the latest version. So now that we have confirmed that I have the latest version of Python running on my installation of Kali Linux, we can go ahead and move on with installing PyCharm. Now to do this, we're going to go up here to the Applications Launcher, and we're going to launch a web browser. Up in the address bar, you're going to need to go to www.jetbrains.com forward slash PyCharm. Now, this is the only authorized site that you can get PyCharm from. Once you're up inside of the website, just scroll on over to the right, and you'll find a download button. Go ahead and click that. On this next page, make sure that you have the download for Linux selected, and you're going to want to get the Community Edition. Go ahead and click on the Download button. When you say OK, the browser is going to automatically save this file to your Downloads directory. Go ahead and click OK. And the file begins to download. And once the download is complete, just go to the Download location up inside of your browser, open that up, here you're going to browse on over to the folder where the download was saved to. This is the download directory. Now we need to extract the contents of this archive. To do this, we're just going to right click on the download and we're going to select from the context menu, extract here. Once all the files have been extracted, find the extracted folder, open it up, and you're going to find the bin folder. Right click on the bin folder. And from the context menu, you're going to select Open a Terminal here. At the prompt, we can type in ls to list the contents of this bin directory. The file that we're interested in is the pycharm.sh file. So we're just going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to go to our prompt, and we're going to type in a period, forward slash, and then we're going to paste the contents of what we just copied. Now, once you have the command correctly typed in at the terminal prompt, just go ahead and hit enter. And this begins the installation of PyCharm. So the first time that you launch PyCharm, you have to agree to the terms of the user agreement. So just go down and check the box. Click the continue button. And you're going to send off some anonymous statistics if you so desire. You don't have to. I'm going to go ahead and say don't send. And now we have launched PyCharm. On this next screen, you have the option of installing featured plugins. We don't need any plugins, so we're going to go ahead and skip remaining and set defaults. And that's going to launch PyCharm. Give it a minute to load up. And we're going to go to a new project. On this next screen, we want to go down here where it says an existing interpreter. Go ahead and check that radio button. And over here to the right, we're going to go ahead and browse. From here, we're going to select from the left window pane, System Interpreter. 
Now, once you have that done, go ahead and just say OK. And now you can click on where it says Create. And so each time you open up a new project, you will be given the tip of the day. Now, if you don't want to see this anymore, you can always check the box here. Don't show tips. And then you can close. If you want the tips back, just go to Help. Go down here where it says Tip of the Day, and your tips are back. Now the next thing we have to do is set the interpreter for all of our projects. Now to do this, we're just going to go to File. From here we're going to go to Settings. On this next page, we're going to click on where it says Python Interpreter in that left window pane. From here we're just going to ensure that Python 3.8 or whatever version of Python is your current version is selected as our Python interpreter. If it's not, just pull down the window here and select it. When you've done that, just go ahead and click OK. Now back at our main console window for PyCharm, you'll see that we have a project already in progress. Now this project, when we opened it, automatically created a new file called main.py. And each time you open up a new project, you will get a new main.py file. This file can easily be renamed to something more conducive or user friendly. Now, we already have in our default file here a very small script that's configured for us that we can run. And to see the results of this, we're just going to go down here and open up a terminal. So you have a couple of different windows that you can watch the results of a script being run. One is the terminal, and the other is the Python console. I'll go ahead and open up a window here for the terminal. And to run this script, which is already configured for us, all I have to do is go over here and click on the Run button. And you'll notice that it comes back down here at the terminal, and it tells us, it says, Hi, PyCharm. So if you would like to create a shortcut on your desktop so that you can launch PyCharm a little easier, you can just go to Tools, and here you can select Create Desktop Entry. You can create a desktop entry for easier starting PyCharm from a system menu and better desktop integration. And we can create that entry for all users. We're going to select OK. Now let's go ahead and exit out of PyCharm. And we're going to go ahead and exit, close out the terminal, Close out this file locator. Close out our browser. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't have that shortcut on your desktop, not a problem. Just go to the application launcher. You're just going to type in Pi. From here, you're going to find the PyCharm Community Edition. You're going to right click and you're going to say Add to Desktop. And there you go. Let's quickly run through creating a new project using PyCharm. First thing I'm going to do is just launch it using the shortcut I have on my desktop. On this first screen, just go ahead and click on where it says New Project. Here we're going to type in a user-friendly name for our project. Now I'm going to call this My First Project. Now we want to uncheck the box so we don't create a main.py welcome script. We don't need that now. We're going to go ahead and click on Create. Find your new project by its name in the left window pane. Right click on it. From the context menu, you're going to select New Python File. For the new name for this file, I'm just going to call it Hello World. Once you have the file name, just hit Enter. Now you'll notice that instead of a main.py file, we have a new Python file that we created called Hello World.py. Now you'll notice that there's nothing inside the script, so if I right-click on it and I say run hello world, nothing's going to happen. This right-clicking inside of our empty pi file allows us to then enable the run and the debug button for our script file up here at the top right. We're now ready to begin writing our first script. Now to do this, I'm going to use a print command followed by a open bracket. And between these two brackets here, I'm going to use a quote. And now between these two quotes, I'm going to type, Welcome to my first Python script. Now, if everything is typing correctly, I should be able to go up here to the right corner and press Run, and I should see something in the terminal below. 
and I do. It says, Welcome to my first Python script. In the lab file, I have provided you with some more links to learning about Python, as well as being able to find some useful snippets of code that you can just paste into your Py file and then run, and then you can see the results. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about installing Python and PyCharm, which is going to be our integrated development environment for creating Python scripts. So if you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor. And I'll see you in my next video.